Thank you, Madam President, uh, Madam President uh, and colleagues. Uh, I stand in support of House Bill 20, uh, 3025B. I, uh, the good president is correct. He did call uh, and he asked me to take a look at House Bill 3025. And I want to go back a little in time. And I want to start with from the big house to the state house and to God's house. Those words were spoken by the minister at Mark or Ted Winters' service, the memorial service that was held here in these Senate chambers on September 5th, 2008. Mr. President, colleagues, it's about two miles from the Oregon State Penitentiary, where Ted entered at the age of 17. Just two miles from there to the governor's office. And seemingly a physical impossibility. And yet, with a history of 30 years of violent crime, and 24 years of harsh commitment and confinement, he made it to the State House and the governor's office, where he not only served one governor, Governor Tom McCall, but two governors, Bob Straub, and colleagues, he served us here in the legislature. I'm reminded when I went through and after talking to, uh, to Dem uh, Senator Dembro and, and to uh, the good president, of the thoughtful courage of our former governor, Tom McCall, who was a strong supporter of the work release program, believing that in creating a taxpayer program, giving opportunities so that an individual could then contribute to society. Colleagues, this occurred in 1967. Tom McCall recruited Ted to be a part of his staff. Some of us who are fond of going to a Mahonia Hall it was on that day in 1967 when Ted was painting, actually, the chimney of, Tom, of Mahonia Hall that he received a call from Neil Concannon, who was the chaplain, to tell him that he was summoned to be interviewed by Marco Haggard, who was the pro political professor at Portland State. There was no box to check off. There was an interview. And through that interview, Ted became a part of the governor's staff. And I stand here today ever grateful to the governor's staff. It wasn't just Governor McCall, but his staff, the correctional staff, those very individuals who guarded him were also became individuals who became friends to, con to encourage the new journey. And legislators, if you go back in time and look at some of the news clips, you will find both Republicans and Democrats who were there at his coming out party. And the media, yes, the media was a part of embracing this policy of second chance and job opportunity. Permit me, Mr. President, Madam President, since you have the dais, to actually read some of the excerpts from the pardon. Without objection. Whereas during 
his most recent term of imprisonment at Oregon State Penitentiary, Mark P. Winters gave evidence of having undergone a religious experience changing his attitude and conduct and placing him in a role of leadership in activities directed towards assisting others, other inmates, to satisfy their spiritual needs. And whereas Mark P. Winters was among the first inmates permitted to, permit, to participate in the work release program beginning in June 1967 and carried out his assignments in a manner beyond reproach. And whereas Mark P. Winters joined the staff of the State of Oregon Economic Opportunity in September 1967, and whereas Mark P. Winters was paroled in February 1969 and discharged uh, from supervision in November 1972, having continued, continued his exemplary record of conduct and achievement, including service as coordinator of the State Office of Economic Opportunity beginning in July 1969, and whereas Mark P. Winters married and established a home and family in June 1971, and since has participated in activities in his church and community. And whereas Mark P. Winters was appointed assistant state ombudsman in 1971 and has carried out the duties of that position with exceptional dedication and ability, drawing on his experience and compassion. And whereas the Oregon Constitution requires all that laws for the punishment of crime shall be founded on principles of reformation and not on vindictive justice. And no individual has given stronger proof of reformation than Mark P. Winters and is incumbent upon the state of Oregon to give appropriate recognition to this reformation, not only for the benefit of Mark P. Winters himself, but at the demonstration to others that no man or woman shall be deemed beyond redemption. Now therefore, in view of the foregoing and by virtue of the authority vested in me, I, Tom McCall, governor of the state of Oregon, hereby grant a full pardon to Mark P. Winters with respect to the crimes remunerated above, restoring to him all the rights and privileges therein. Colleagues, I do not expect that this bill will lead to pardons, but I do, and when I was asked, the question whether I thought that Ted Winters would agree and, and give me the advice to go forward on this bill. And I said yes. Ms. Madam President, I ask this question. Once an individual has paid his or her debt to society, by serving time in our prison system, do we then make it impossible for them to return to their families and further to become contributing taxpaying members to, our, to their communities? By voting yes on the bill, we will be send, telling the nearly 30,000 Oregonians who are currently under Department of Corrections control, that when you've done your time, we will let you have a chance for reentry. 
Ted's contribution was not only 41 years before his death of being a taxpayer, but also of being a father, a grandfather, a business owner. His legacy, very long, and I would probably take most of the day to enumerate the contributions that he made to this great state. You know, I often hear about long-term care ombudsman. Ted started the nursing home ombudsman when he was the ombudsman. Those of us who benefit from housing and community development department have him to thank. Those individuals through Citizens for Progress through law, when it wasn't really normal or just on the average for John Q. Citizen to come to lobby all of us on these floors, through his work uh, as the State Economic Opportunity Director made certain that poor and others would have a place at this table. His work on reentry long before we called it that, of building a bridge between the state prison and our faith-based community and our community. It was difficult for me to stand here with you this morning to relive all the things that we, he has done. And I know his legacy will live for a long time. And I know that he would be, Mr. President, be proud of your words and say yes to what you said this morning. And I do want to thank some individuals this morning who, and it's Senator Courtney, Mr. President, Senator Ferrioli, the Capital Foundation, and Dave Hafner, who served on my staff. And there's special thanks to them because colleagues, on the west wing of this Capitol, there is a tree planted. There is a tree planted and a marker which says, it's dedicated to a true pioneer who served two governors in the legislature. Colleagues, it is important. We can either decide whether we want to continue to build prisons because that really is also at the heart of what we do. 3194, we passed, and we said we wanted to adopt a policy that supported sending people back to the community where they can be productive. If you don't have a job, you don't have a place to lay your head, you can't reconnect with your families, I guarantee you, we're continuing a revolving door. A revolving door that will take us to a cost, and colleagues, we're already there, of competing our scarce resource, education versus prisons. For me, I would rather invest in education. So colleagues, I, it took me a lot of thought to stand before you this morning and share that journey of Mark P. Ted Winters. A journey where when we stand debating this morning, and yes, he was a business owner, and we hired ex-offenders. And we had no application because we could ask the question. The question can be asked of what was your crime and what were you sent to prison for? Sometimes, colleagues, we forget that we're all in this boat together. And I try to remind myself that we're here to set good policy. And I'm blessed, I feel so eternally blessed, that 48 years ago, 48 years ago, there was the wisdom and courage in this building and in that center office to give an individual a chance. Because without that, I wouldn't have had all these blessings and been married to an individual. And, and June 19th will be 41 years. 
Thank you, Mr. Pre Madam President.